So we're not sampling anything here, right? We're creating all the values between 0, 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1, 1. And we're just printing them out. So this is great. We get to uh, you know, create this relationship between decimal numbers and binary numbers. Maybe that's not what we want to do. Maybe instead we want to analyze um, maybe we want to analyze the number of occurrences of the bit one instead of zero. So we just want to sum the ones in the list. So let's do that. Uh, let's call this um, uh, binary dict. And this is going to take a binary list. And I'm going to say, um, you know, I'm going to make my dictionary accumulator. And I'm going to say for um, Uh, what for val for bin binary in bin list. Um, I'm going to say, uh, let's just sum the values in there. So uh, we're going to sum zero plus one plus one plus zero, right? Which, which will give us two. So I'm going to say um, the sum is going to get the sum of the binary. And notice what I did here. Uh, sum is a reserved word. Um, it's a method built into Python. So uh, I used the underscore here. Um, that's, that's a fairly common practice. You'll see that a lot. In machine learning in general, the way that you see the underscore is if a variable has been modified uh, after it's been passed into a method. It's, it's sort of like after you build something, you give it the underscore because it's still the same thing, but now it has new values in it, right? Um, or modified values in it. So I'm just going to say that, and I'm going to I'm going to say, well, if if this sum is in the dictionary as a key, right? Because remember, keys have to be unique. Okay. So if the sum is not in the dictionary already, then we want to put it in the dictionary. So we're going to say sum sub, uh, oh, we're going to say D sub sum is going to be set to zero. So this is the first thing I'm doing. I'm setting it to zero. And then, you know, if that's, if that's, uh, if the sum is not in the dictionary, then we set it to zero. If it is in the dictionary, then we don't set it to zero because it's already, it already exists, right? And if it, if it, if it already exists, then it should have a value of one at least already. And instead of, um, so all I want to do at this point, I've observed another sum, so let's say three, I just want to increment this by one. And then that's it. I'm going to return this dictionary. And if I call, uh, so I'm going to say, I'm still going to call this bin D so I don't have to rewrite this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this function, pass in uh, bin list. So I'm calling uh, the bin dict function, and I'm passing in the binary list that, um, that we created up here. And now we're going to see, we're actually going to see a distribution of values. So I'm going to save this. I'll run it. And here's our distribution of values. So zero occur, occurs once, and sure enough, we can see that. Zero occurs once, right? Doesn't occur again. And uh, four occurs once, right? The sum of ones, when it's only equal to four, one time. And then uh, three occurs four times. So we could, we could go through and count this. So here it occurs, four, uh, it occurs once, um, here it occurs once, and somewhere else. <laughs> oh, uh, here. Uh, did I already highlight that one? Anyway, anyway, believe me, it's in there four times. Um, one is in there four times, and two is our most common occurrence. So if we want to really get a visual on this, we can do something like, you know, just kind of simple little visualization. Um, Bear with me if you've seen this before from me. But um, yeah. So now we have 
uh, we have a nice you know plot of the counts of items in this in this uh, sorry the sum of ones across all of these binary uh, binary that can occur in four bit binary. So to kind of give a sense of this, why this is cool, why you might want to think about this, um, we're going to relate it to a random event where uh, the outcome can only be 0 or it can only be 1. right? So think about a coin flip. You're either going to get 0 or 1. There's a 50-50 chance. This distribution we're seeing right here is a theoretical distribution for um, four coin flips. You would expect to see two as the most common occurrence, three as less common, uh, three and one as less common, and zero and four as least common. Okay, so it's kind of kind of cool, right? Um, when we think about this, you know, we think about the first trial, then the second trial, then the third trial, then the fourth trial, right? So in our first trial, it can be zero or one. In our second trial, it can be zero or one. In our third trial, it can be zero or one. In our fourth trial, it can be zero or one. And this is, uh, this is a binomial distribution, as it turns out. Um, a binomial distribution is a series of Bernoulli trials. A Bernoulli trial is simply that coin flip, right? Where you have some fixed probability of heads or tails. Here it's 50-50, right? It's 0.5. Uh, for heads, or 0.5 for one. And we're just looking at the theoretical distribution for four coin flips. So we don't have any randomness here, right? We're not seeing any kind of randomness. Um, we are building the entire uh, set of possibilities. 